61A, lecture number six. Announcements. The HOG project is due this Thursday. But please complete checkpoint one, which is the first phase, by today. If you take a look at the office hours schedule, you'll see that we have office hours from 12 to two and a HOG project party tonight. We'll have lots of staff at the HOG project party. It's a great time to come in and get some help if you're having trouble finishing phase one. There's no problem with asking for help, that's very normal, but you have to come in or post on Piazza, otherwise you don't get any help. Once you submit phase one, you can start working with a partner. You can share your code with a partner. You'll both turn in one version of the project and starting tomorrow, you'll be able to mark your partner on okpy.org. If you want an early submission bonus point, you can complete the whole project by Wednesday, which is what I recommend. Homework two is due on Thursday. There it is. It was posted last Friday night and it's about higher order functions, which we covered last week. There are only three questions and they're all kind of related to each other. So if you're keeping up with lecture and lab and discussion, then I don't think this will take you as much time as homework one did. If you want more to do, there's a long and very challenging question at the end, which is not part of the course really. I mean, it uses ideas from the course, but it's not there as extra practice or to help you prepare for exams. It really is just for fun. So check it out if you have extra time, but otherwise just ignore it. Midterm one will be next Monday at 8 p.m. We will send you a seat assignment on Sunday because we hold the exam in many different locations around campus. There will be no lecture on Monday. Instead, I wanna give you some time back so that you can take the midterm in the evening. It's rather late this semester. Sometimes we get it at seven, sometimes it's at eight. We're lucky that midterm two is gonna be at seven instead of eight, but this one ended up at eight just because of scheduling constraints. I'm sorry about that. But we picked this day so that we can try to get your scores back before the ad drop deadline in case anyone wants that information in order to decide whether to continue in the course this semester or perhaps wait for a future semester. We will provide you with scratch paper, the exam itself where you'll answer the questions, and we provide the midterm one study guide which looks like this. It's a compilation of all the important figures and notes from the lecture so far. There's Fibonacci to keep you company and it's one page front and back in fairly small print. We will provide this for you, print it for you, so you don't need to print it yourself. But it does help to read it in advance. It's kind of a useless document if you haven't looked at it before the exam. I believe it does cover most of what you need to know Though if we left something off of the study guide, that doesn't mean I'm not gonna ask you questions about it, but I've tried to be comprehensive. If you wanna try out some past exam problems, take a look at the resources page. Here's the resources page, which has a bunch of past exams. And in order to help you study topics instead of whole exams, we've aggregated exams from past midterms on control, which includes if and while statements, and separately a section on higher order functions, functions that return other functions or take other functions as arguments. Many of these exams have video solutions in addition to just regular written solutions. Some students find those helpful. And if you want to have a practice exam, I recommend last semester's midterm one. Here are the solutions. It covers exactly the same topics as we're covering this semester. My last announcement is to clarify the policies in this course. Discussing problems is encouraged, but sharing solutions is not allowed. So let's say you're working on number five from homework one. If somebody tells you, oh, that one's pretty straightforward, just write false print five, print six, and you're done. That's not allowed. That's just telling you the answer. That's exactly equivalent to looking at somebody else's code. So if somebody does that to you, say, no, I don't want the answer. I want some guidance. And what would reasonable guidance be? Well, if you finish that problem and you're trying to help somebody else, instead of telling them what to type, you could say, hey, have you tried printing? Because when you print, it will display the output regardless of whether that return value is used or not. And that might not be enough information for them to solve the problem right away. That's okay. 
when you're helping somebody, you are not responsible for solving the problem for them, just for giving them enough direction that they can sort it out themselves. I trust since you took the syllabus quiz that you know the course policies, one of which is that if you miss a homework problem, you can still get full credit on the homework just by going to lab the next week and reviewing the problem with a GSI. So please don't tell each other the answers, and if you're looking for information on how to solve a problem, don't look at past solutions from previous semesters, and don't ask your friends who have taken the course what they wrote. Both of these are just looking up the answer. And this is not a course where the goal in homework is to look at the solution and then understand it. The goal is to come up with the solution through discussion, thinking, and problem solving.